Welcome back to the Adobe Photoshop CS5 for Architectures. Now, one of the most common ways of selecting colour is through the colour picker here. So I'm going to go over to my colour picker here, click on that, and you can see it will open up a colour picker in which if I drag my pointer through there, I get a whole series of millions of different colour selections and the slider here allows me to adjust the hue so here I go into the blues yeah I'm pretty happy with that colour I'm going to go OK uh oh hang on a sec the actual colour itself is not coming up as a blue it's coming up as a grey so if I actually tried to fill that using the paint bucket tool into that section through here. It's actually not blue at all. So I'm going to undo that, Control Z. Now first thing I'm going to check is the mode that I'm working in. Now there's different modalities that Photoshop works in and these colour modalities are under the uh, pull down uh, application image under mode and you can see the issue straight away we've actually generated a grayscale mode. Yeah. So I'm going to have to fix this up. Now you'll notice if I go to RGB color there's a few issues that are going to come along the way here as well. So I'm going to change to RGB color because I want to do color. But Adobe Photoshop when it changes modes it actually needs to flatten the image at the same time. So my layer designations through here are going to be lost. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten the image. Okay, so now you can see I've got a nice blue color. So I know that I'm working with color now. If I go control zero and expand to the extents, I'm going to try and recover the layering. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the rectangular marquee tool going to select this first image here, going to copy it, shortcut control C or command C on a Mac, and then just control V to paste it back into place. I'm going to do that with the others, with the lower level plan, copy, oops, you can see what's happened there is because um, I've selected the layer 1 and in fact the copying area is actually invisible. So let's turn back on the background, turn off layer 1, make background the active layer. Now it should work. So if I go copy and paste, go back to the background layer, go copy and paste. Now really the only loss that I have is the fact that the background layer and the foreground layer of this section have been collapsed back into one but at this current stage I'm not really too worried about that so I'm going to turn off all of the other layers and you can see the layer the image that I copied from in the background still has those original drawings in it so as a last thing I'm going to pull a marquee over that and just clear that so I'm going to pick my delete key it's asking me if I want to fill that area with a background color. Yes, I do. Okay. So I've got a clear background. I'm going to stop that selection going control D. Turn the layers back on. And so not much is lost. I'm going to rename my layers so that I can orientate through them easier. This is ground level and layer 1, level 1 plan. Okay, so now we're back to I guess where we started from. Now I'm going to zoom in to that water tank again. Select a colour of water, although we know that water is clear. I'm going to overlook that because for this reason of the graphic we're going to make it blue 
So in the section layer, I'm just going to dump the blue into there. Now be careful that you select the la proper layer that you want to fill into, because if I undo that, Control Z, so if I had the ground layer highlighted, and I tried to put that blue fill in there, what's going to happen? It's actually going to fill the screen. Control zero. So that's not the effect we want. So if we go undo, Control Z, let's zoom back into where the tank is, go to section, get our paint bucket tool, fill that, and there you go. Now, if we look, double click on that color picker tool, you notice we've also got other ways of picking colors. There's a series of color libraries. Now these are standard um, uh, color selection charts that work a little bit like paint charts um, that you get at your uh, local hardware store when you're buying paint. So you can get these color swatches printed out and they correspond with the color swatches, their designations in the different libraries. Now the reason why you would use these is if you're doing a slightly more professional presentation you want to be able to control the look of the color very precisely and if you select a Pantone color and you look at the Pantone color swatch the bureau will be able to match the color to the swatch perfectly despite the fact that it would look slightly different on the screen. Now there's a whole series of predefined swatches in the panel over on the swatches here as well and when we hover over the different colors it gives us the eyedropper and we can select different colors. Now if you notice over in the color active color wheel over through here or active color window sorry the tool it changes when we select different colors. Now the final um, color selector um, option I'm going to show you requires that I open another file. Now in the exercise as you can see here's a tree for color picker. So I'm going to select that. Now sometimes to get contextually specific colors it's good to sort of find um, a color from nature, photograph it and then choose from that to um, make your color selection. I'm going to go to the deck through here. Now I want quite a nice um, sort of grey or slightly um, weathered look to the deck through here. So I'm going to go to my tree for colour picker and I'm going to pick a nice sort of grey sort of eucalyptus colour. Now up on the left here in the toolbar you can see there's an eyedropper tool. Now I'm going to select that. Now, if you look in the control panel through the top here, there's a series of pull downs. Now, by default, it probably is on this point sample, in which case, every time I pull the eyedropper on top there, it's selecting the pixel exactly underneath that eyedropper. Now, sometimes that sort of precision is a little bit frustrating because you'll get a mix of colors that doesn't really look like the color that you're trying to aim for. It's probably better when you're using the color picker to open the average and what it will do is if we go either 5x5 five five or 11x11 11 11 pixel average and we select the color, it's actually picking the color from a slightly larger area and averaging that out. Now, there's another function on the control panel through here that shows sampling ring. Now, that's currently greyed out. Um, the sampling ring is actually quite a handy tool, but by default, um, it would often be um, deactivated. Now, I actually like activating that, so I'm going to show you how to activate it. Now, again, this is activated from the preferences 
going to go into general now the preference is in performance and what it is it's this open GL drawing now again this will slow down the performance of the machine but it's quite a neat tool so I'm going to click on that go OK what I'm actually going to have to do to show that is close the tree for color window open it again I can go to open recent tree for color picker now you can see my sampling ring is active so if I go back to my oops I'm going to go back to my trunk now if I pull my eyedropper across the trunk you can see oh, that's actually quite a nice color there the selected color is in the top ring the existing color is in the bottom half of the ring it's quite a neat way of picking the right color I quite like that color it's slightly brown like the timber but it's also slightly weathered so I'm going to select that now if I go back to the untitled or to my presentation sheet sorry you can see that as I flick between the open files the colors actually still loaded up into there so if I go to my ground level plan and fill I get quite a nice color there I'm not mad keen on the way that it's filling so I'm going to undo that and we'll have a look at that in the next session but just one last thing with this color picker if you want to actually set up a d almost like a series of color swatches based on a sampling of the context one thing that you can actually do is if we go into the filter we can change the appearance of um, the image to a more pixelated image and we can make a very extreme pixelated image and if we go to mosaic and let's sort of push the cell size up to really pixelate that image go OK what we actually have now is kind of like a contextually specific whole series of color swatches which makes it very easy to pick from so there's a little tip for you now we go back to our presentation sheet now in the next uh, video we're going to go through um, applying color with fill using a marquee so stick around for that and we'll see you in the next video